And then, of course, the big difference for uh, strong bases and weak bases, uh, no matter what they are, is that strong bases don't set up equilibrium. So it's boom, one arrow, goes to completion, irreversible. Whereas weak bases set up equilibrium, so you have both reactants and both products. Okay? So for ammonia, you throw ammonia, it's going to accept protons, but you're still going to have some ammonia. And ammonium, and you'll set them up in equilibrium. So one question will that I haven't gotten yet, but I usually do, um, is how do you how, will you be able to need to know the difference between strong acids and weak acids? And generally, no. But I do want you to know some. Okay. And so the strong acids, I want you to memorize three strong acids for this course. Okay. So the three strong acids. to memorize, and they're just really common, we'll use them all the time in lecture, you've already used them in the lab quite a bit, uh, would be hydrochloric, HCl, nitric, HNO3, and then sulfuric, H2SO4. Not sulfurous, technically sulfurous is a weak acid, and technically it doesn't exist, so. And then for your strong bases, all you need to know is that they're soluble hydroxides. And what are your strong bases, or your soluble hydroxides, are group one and group two. Okay, so hydrochloric, nitric, and sulfuric acid, if you see those, assume they're strong acids. Because they are, just assume. If you see any other acid, you can assume it's a weak acid. All right. There are other strong acids, like perchloric acid, chromic acid, there's other, but they're less common, and you, you mean, we generally don't use them in the lab very often, uh, at least for us. Okay. And then group one and group two hydroxides. Primarily, what we generally use in the lab is group one hydroxides, uh, so particularly sodium and potassium hydroxide, and you've used those plenty in the lab already. Uh, the reason why they're better than group two uh, is they have a lot higher solubility. Okay? You can make six molar, eight molar sodium hydroxide very easily. Uh, group two hydroxides barely get uh, like 0.2 molar, so very limited solubility. So uh, group one hydroxides are usually a lot better, and more commonly used. All right, so let's start talking about how we uh, 